The landmark Malambaya Deep Water Gas to Power Project is the largest infrastructure development and investment ever undertaken in the Philippines. It is slated to reduce the country's dependence on imported fuel by approximately 30%. Shell Philippines Exploration BV, or SPECS, together with Philippine National Oil Company Exploration Corporation and Texaco Philippines Incorporated, are responsible for the development of the project's upstream component. During the period April to July 2000, a number of milestones were achieved. With the completion of the civil construction phase of the CGS at the end of March, work continued with a mechanical fitting out of the structure. Four risers attached to the outside of shaft two will transmit gas and condensate to and from the top sides when the platform is in operation. The risers consist of two 16-inch import pipes, one 24-inch pipe for export of condensate to a loading buoy, and a 24-inch riser which connects with a pipeline to Batangas. The CGS was also prepared for float out. This trench was constructed to provide the means to flood the basin. After flooding, the CGS would float in readiness for the tow to location. With mooring points in place and the bund wall still intact, the basin was prepared for flooding. In parallel with these activities, a sheet piled wall was completed to allow future use of the basin after the CGS has departed. While all this was taking place, life carried on as usual for the local fishermen. Meanwhile, 50 kilometers northwest off the coast of Palawan, the rocky giant was preparing the seabed for this 96,000 ton structure. First production rock dumping commenced on April 11. The prepared seabed contained 360 rock humps, providing drainage for the CGS foundation and a uniform surface upon which the CGS will rest following installation. Accurate survey techniques were employed to ensure the precise positioning of the CGS on the seabed. Back at Subic, work was now well underway in preparation for the tow-out. A temporary work platform had been previously installed on top of Shaft 2 to allow for installation of pipeline drying facilities later this year. This platform will be removed before the top sides are installed. Meanwhile, earth-moving machinery connected the entrance of the trench to the sea to enable flooding of the basin. Excavators then breached the entrance trench wall, allowing seawater to come up the channel to the sluice gates. Finally, the sluice gates were opened. Flooding began as water flowed into the basin, where the floor was 11 meters below sea level. Over the next 36 hours, some 300,000 cubic meters of seawater filled the basin, which would allow the CGS to float with around half a meter clearance from the basin floor. Soon after, dredging activities commenced. Dredge vessel Discovery Bay undertook the task of removing the bund wall and providing a channel from the open sea into the casting basin through which the CGS will pass. The dredged material was transported via a one kilometer long floating pipeline to a pontoon and through a suspended fall pipe that directs it to the approved disposal area. Dredging commenced on May 15 and was completed on the morning of May 28. Around 220,000 cubic meters of material was moved. Now, with a CGS securely moored awaiting tow out, the only access is by water. The float-out of the CGS from the dock began at 2 p.m. on May 28. While two harbor tugs controlled the bearing and movement of the gigantic structure, a single ocean-going tug slowly edged the CGS into the bay, taking two hours to clear the bund wall.
further down the bay, two additional ocean-going tugs were hooked up to the CGS and were configured for the tow. At this point, the two harbor tugs were released. When the tow bridles and tow lines were in place, the CGS open ballast cells were flooded with seawater to provide stability for the tow. Once set, the structure was ready for the journey. Four days later, in the early morning hours of June 1, the CGS arrived on location some 80 kilometers off northwest Palawan. The tug vessels were then reconfigured for installation, with a fourth tug joining in to maneuver the CGS into precise position. At first light, the installation team was stationed on the CGS in readiness for the ballasting operations. The four tugs were connected to pre-laid anchors, allowing the CGS to be gradually moved into position. A series of valves were opened to commence ballasting by flooding four separate caisson compartments. This allowed for an inclined installation method to be adopted, placing one end of the CGS down first to maintain stability and ensure accuracy of location before completing ballasting. At half past six, the structure was at 20 degree angle, with one side touching the seabed in 43 meter water depth. Fifteen minutes past midnight on June 2, the CGS was in place on the seabed, with the tugs disconnected at 7 a.m. Following a survey of the position, solid ballasting and scour protection installation began. After two days, the scour protection was completed, with solid ballasting completed around the end of June. The CGS is now in place ready for the arrival of the topsides in 2001. Soon after the departure of the CGS, abandonment of the site in Subic proceeded in compliance with the Environmental Compliance Certificate and approved abandonment plan. April to June was likewise bustling at Patangas with the arrival of the pipe lay vessel Solitaire which is tasked with a laying of the 504-kilometer gas export pipeline and 30-kilometer long flow lines. The pipeline, which will function as the artery of the project, will transport the dry gas from the production platform in Palawan to the onshore gas plant in Batangas. The route takes the vessel from Batangas Bay through the very deep waters around the Verde Island Passage to the east coast of Mindoro along Buswanga Island to the platform. Construction involves welding 42,000 pipes, each 12 meters in length, into a long string. The solitaire, moving without the use of anchors, is capable of laying some 5 to 7 kilometers of pipes per day. The first pipe went overboard on June 12, appropriately the Philippines Independence Day. In Batangas, off Shell Stabangal Refinery, an initial 1 kilometer pipe string was laid on the seabed. After this successful string initiation, everything was prepared for the pipe pull. Overcoming the seabed friction, the pipe began to move at 180 tons pull-in force. After two hours, the pull-in head surfaced on the beach at dawn, an event welcomed by the waiting onshore team. Solitaire immediately moved on to continue the pipe lay into Batangas Bay. Nearby, at the onshore gas plant, the accommodation and administration buildings have been completed. Extensive column foundations are being placed onto the ground to protect the ground from potential earthquake shocks. Also in Batangas, fabrication of the catenary anchored leg mooring, or calm, commenced on May 22 at the AGNP facility in Bawan. The calm is the component through which condensate will be loaded onto tankers. Completion and installation is expected before year end. During the progress period, a number of milestones were achieved in the subsea area of the project, 
including the construction of the Malampaya Manifold and successful factory acceptance test, completion of four of the six subsea Christmas trees, and the successful function testing of the Cameron control system. The manufacturing has been completed and all the equipment is undergoing system integration testing here in Singapore. And in addition, the manufacture of the two subsea umbilicals has been completed now in Norway. At the Sembawang Yard in Singapore, the top sides continue to take shape. Highlights during April were the completion of blast walls on the cellar and production decks, which separate the hazardous process areas from the utilities and living quarters. Work also proceeded on the living quarters module, upon which the helideck was successfully installed. During the progress period, over 1,000 lifts were carried out to transport all pipework from the fabrication shops onto the platform. Top sides is around 75% complete and is essentially on, on schedule. The program is very tight. We have some important uh, deadlines to meet, especially to be ready to sail away from here on the 1st of March 2001. By end June, the living quarters module was ready for lifting into position on the top sides. By its very nature, bearing in mind the weight and dimensions involved, the process is painstaking and carefully controlled using an Asian Hercules heavy lift floating crane. The overall operation was carefully planned and the module was successfully installed within four hours from being lifted off its supports. The living quarters are now permanently fixed on the top sides. We are currently fitting out the top sides with pipe work, electrical cables, uh, fitting out all equipment. And we've designed and fabricated a living quarters which was successfully lifted onto the top sides and now forms an integral part of the structure. Staff will conduct a 72-hour habitation test to ensure the module is working and operating as designed. Intensive competency training to prepare Filipino engineers for the operation of the production platform continued at Sembawa. In the sphere of HSE, specs celebrated on June 13, 10 million man-hours without lost time injury. And in the midst of all development activities, SPEC signed on June 26 a memorandum of agreement with the Department of Energy to explore the development of natural gas infrastructure and markets in the Philippines. This agreement presents a significant step in paving the future of the natural gas industry in the country. The signing was witnessed by President Estrada at the Malacanang Palace. Alongside construction activities for the technical aspect of Malampaya, interface with communities continued to be undertaken. Dialogues, consultations, and information campaigns in various provinces are carried out to ensure acceptability among stakeholders is sustained. Furthermore, support for various self-help social development and environmental programs continue to be maintained in partnership with Filipina Shell Foundation. On July 21, a SPEC-supported agreement was signed between Shell Foundation and the government of Mindoro. The agreement is expected to spur additional social and livelihood programs that will foster the island's sustainable development. All these have so far been achieved with a degree of care and concern unsurpassed in a major industrial infrastructure development. As the delivery date for Malampaya nears, the people that make up the dedicated team ensure that the team spirit is constantly nourished. Each looks to a common goal that provides the beacon in the quest to establish a future for a nation and a people.